Welcome, I'm Tom Saffold, your host for George Washington Speaks. Today we'll hear from a member of parliament who surprised the lower house with his support in favor of the colonies. Four days after Franklin's testimony, parliament was still undecided as how to proceed. Charles Townsend rose and in an effort to convince the assembly to pass the tax, highlighted how generous Britain had been toward the American colonies over the years. Unexpectedly, a member of parliament from Ireland who had served in the colonies during the French and Indian War could not contain himself and delivered a blistering response to Townsend. Hold on to your seats. I introduce you to Colonel Isaac Barr, the member of parliament from Chipping Wickham in the Barr edition of George Washington Speaks. On February 6, 1765, Isaac Barre cautioned members of the House of Commons regarding the passage of the Stamp Act. We have his words written down. In reading them, I will try to do justice to his intent. He said this, We are working in the dark, and the less we do, the better. What about our power and our right? We should exercise caution, lest the power be abused, the right subverted, and two million of unrepresented people mistreated, and in their own opinion, made slaves. There are gentlemen in this house from the West Indies, but there are very few who know the circumstances of North America. The tax intended is so odious to all of your colonies that they tremble at it. He thinks part of the regulation passed last year to be very wise in preventing the colonies from getting the commodities they want and need from foreign countries. However, we do not know the real effect of this tax. We are the mother country. Let us be cautious not to get the name of stepmother. We also have the words of Charles Townshend. He recognized Barre's points, and he coolly countered them. In reading his words, I will also try to do justice to his intent. And he said, And now, will these Americans, these children, planted by our care, nourished up by our indulgence until they have grown to a degree of strength and opulence, and, protected by our arms, will they grudge to contribute their might to relieve us from this heavy weight of the burden which we now lie under? <laughs> to which Isaac Barre stood and immediately responded, and quite frankly, I need not be careful in reading his words. You will get the blunt truth of his intent. They were planted by your care? No. Your oppressions planted them in America. They fled from your tyranny to a then uncultivated and unhospitable country, where they exposed themselves to almost all the hardships to which human nature is liable, and among others, to the cruelties of a savage foe, the most subtle, and I take it upon myself to say, the most formidable of any people upon the face of God's earth. And yet, actuated by the principles of true English liberty, they met all these hardships with pleasure. Compared with those they suffered in their own country from the hands of those who should have been their friends. They were nourished up by your indulgence. <laughs> they grew by your neglect of them. As soon as you began to care about them, that care was exercised in sending persons to rule over them, in one department or another, who were perhaps the deputies of deputies to some member of this house that were sent. For what purpose? To spy out their liberty? to misrepresent their actions and to prey upon them? Men that were sent there whose behavior on many occasions has caused the blood of those sons of liberty to shudder within them. 
men promoted to the highest seats of justice, some who to my knowledge were glad by going to a foreign country to escape being brought to the bar of a court of justice in their own country. They were protected by your arms. <laughs> they have nobly taken up arms in your defense. They have exerted a valor amidst their constant and laborious industry for the defense of a country whose frontier, while drenched in blood, its interior parts have yielded all its little savings to your profit. And believe me, remember I this day told you that that same spirit of freedom that actuated that people at first to go to the colonies will accompany them still in this matter. But prudence forbids me to explain myself further. God knows I do not at this time speak from motives of party heat. What I deliver are the genuine sentiments of my own heart. However superior to me in general knowledge and experience this reputable body of this house may be, yet I do claim to know more of America than most of you, having seen and been familiar with that country. The people, I believe, are as truly loyal as any subjects the king has, but they are a people jealous of their liberties and who will defend those liberties even ever they should be violated. But the subject is too delicate, and I will say no more. In this momentous monologue, Barre called the British colonists in America the Sons of Liberty, <laughs> an identity that was quickly adopted in the New England colonies and would forever be connected with opposition to the Stamp Act and to tyranny. Unfortunately for Britain and the colonies, Parliament was not swayed by the testimonies of either Dr. Franklin or Colonel Bard. As it will become apparent, the issue was not that Parliament was not hearing or paying attention. If you pay attention, you will begin to see it went much deeper than that. Their aggressiveness over the next 18 years exposed the motivations that drove them even at the cost of tens of thousands of Englishmen's lives. In the next edition of George Washington Speaks, Parliament throws down its gloves and declares they'll no longer be Mr. Nice Guy, that they will openly tax the colonies for revenue to be used to support the troops left in the colonies for our benefit, and that they thought would be the last of it. Join us the next time for how their prophecy held up in the Stamp Act edition of George Washington Speaks. <laughs>